Very pleasant good evening to all of you. Welcome to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Tonight on the SEC ESPN Network, it's college gymnastics as the nationally ranked LSU Tigers from the SEC take on the West Virginia Mountaineers from the Big 12. Come on inside the Maravich Center, everyone, with former two-time LSU All-America, Kaylee Dixon Abood. I'm Lynn Rollins. Kaylee, this is the final regular season meet of the year for the nationally ranked Tigers. What does LSU hope to accomplish tonight? LSU is looking to come in here with a championship mindset in order to improve their national qualifying score. You'll see that the six ranked LSU Tigers come into NQS this week at 197, 665 as West Virginia tallies in at 196, 165. What the national qualifying score does is it takes the top six scores from the regular season, three of which must be away. You drop the highest score, you average the remaining five, that levels the playing field in the NCAA, and that helps seed these teams for the regional championships. We are in for a treat tonight because one of the very best gymnasts in the country will be competing in the all around for LSU. That is Haley Bryant, and she has been remarkable in 2023. You cannot talk about college gymnastics without mentioning Haley Bryant's name. She now owns 16 all-around titles in her career to tie her sixth best in LSU history. And her 52 individual career titles tie her at 10th in program history for the most individual titles in LSU history. Well, this has been a very busy week for Jason Butts and his Mountaineers. They will take on Rutgers at Rutgers on Sunday. So a quick weekend turnaround. Jason Butts in his 12th season as the West Virginia head coach. And nine times he has taken the Mountaineers to an NCAA regional championship appearance. And of course, uh, there is one of the coaching legends, Jay Clark, in his third season as the head coach at LSU, his 11th season overall. Uh, he was associate head coach prior to taking over for D.D. Bro. He has coached nine NCAA Bars champions. That's an NCAA record. Former uh, very successful coach at Georgia as well and a three-time national co-assistant coach of the year. Both of these programs, Kaylee, are in very good hands. It's going to be a great meet tonight. Each team just looking to get a little bit better than last week and improve their national qualifying score like we talked about earlier. It's going to be a good one. Let's take a look at LSU in its first rotation. Arena Shenakoba. Chase Brock, she's an interesting story we'll develop later. Finnegan, Wilson, and Bryant. Elena is an amazing vaulter for LSU. She's a strong, strong leadoff. 2021 SEC vaulting champion. So this is going to be a great vault that you're not going to want to miss. That is a very good start. And that is exactly what you expect from Elena Arenas leading off this vaulting rotation. That was a huge Yurchenko layout full. She stuck the landing. That's going to throw a big score for the Tigers. Let's take a look at the uh, bars lineup. Yancey and Combs, Lee Smith, Alban, Holmes Hackard. Nancy is out of Pennsylvania, Hatfield, Pennsylvania. Her average, just under 9.8. She went 9.85 last week, so let's see if she can top that score, leading off this bar rotation for the Mountaineers. On bars, this is what we're looking for. Handstands, big release moves. Going to want to catch those two, of course. And then a nice big dismount with, of course, a stuff landing. Nice double layout with a stuffed dismount. The judges are going to like to see that, and that was a solid leadoff. And Arenas' score has been posted 9.875. That's better than her season's average of 9.835. So the Tigers now, as we go back to vault, Shenikova, the senior from Evergreen, Colorado. 9.732 has been her season's average, and her best, 9.95. On vault, we're looking for that 10-0 start value. 
Alona's vault does start from a 10.0 with that Yurchenko full and a half. Some of them will start from a 9.95, and that's okay too. It just depends on what the athlete is most comfortable doing. She had a small hop on that landing, but overall a very nice vault. That landing is very, very difficult because it's blind. Here's Kendra Combs out of Windsor, Connecticut. Her bars average this year, 9.765. Kaylee, hearkening back to your days as an All-America gymnast, when, when you were on the road especially, what was the most difficult event for you personally? For me personal, and I think that everyone would agree with this, definitely bars. 100% that was that was my struggle, but it ended up being one of my best events because of how Jay Clark coached me and helped develop me as an athlete. I ended up becoming really confident on that event, and that's what gymnastics, especially at this level, is all about. That was another great routine. A few little form mishaps here and there, small tiny hop on the landing, but overall a solid routine. Well, Yancey scored. Well, we'll get her score in just a minute. Shenikova, 9.85 for LSU. And uh, Yancey was a 9.85 as well, so good work there by both. Goes Chase Brock for the Tigers. Yurchenko full and a half. Lunged forward on that landing because she over-rotated a little bit, but it's good that she went forwards and not backwards because that means it's a little bit under-rotated and the judges would rather you take that step forward, but unfortunately that will be a landing deduction. Chase Brock, quite the story here lately for LSU. She has exploded for this team, come into her own and it has really made a name for herself and has been such an asset to this LSU Tigers team. Well, considering the number of athletes that are, are lost for several meets or the season and the illness as well, Chase Brock, the last couple of times she's she's gone to work, has, has really been a huge lift for LSU. She has. She's instilled confidence in the lineups along with big scores. So it's great to see her emerge in those lineups and really help this Tiger team get to where they want to be. She scored a 9.75 on the vault. like the judges were deliberating a little bit on that last score. LSU nationally is second only behind Oklahoma in uh, the vaulting competition this year. That's very rarefied air. It is, and LSU has always had a strong vaulting team. So it's no shock to me, but they, they are ones to watch on that apparatus. Big release move. Want to see her a little bit more on top of the bar in that hip cast handstand. Back up to the bar, setting up for that dismount. That was a very nice double layout with a stuck landing to finish off that beautiful routine. And the preceding participant, Kendra Combs, scored 9.775. Release again. Another required element for the uneven bars. And the double layout dismount. Now Aaliyah Finnegan. Very nice vault. She took that step. She had a lot of height, a lot of distance, but obviously did not get that landing she was hoping for. She's capable of scoring a 10.0 on this event. She's done that this season so far. So just working the landings, finding out where you need to open in order to get that perfect stick. Her average this year is 9.872, or I beg your pardon, 9.858. And as you mentioned, she has been perfect. Here's Miranda Smith. She's a youngster out of Hartford, New York. First year participant for West Virginia. These teams have played 11 times against each other overall, and the Tigers have won all of them. 
LSU five times has hosted West Virginia prior to this meet, and five times LSU has come away a winner in this building. Miranda is one of the many freshmen on this Mountaineers team. She's just getting her college career started, and she's hoping for some big things here. Pentagon was 9.8 on uh, vault for LSU. Bail to handstand down to the low bar. Double layout dismount. Didn't quite have enough to make it around, so she had to take that step forward. But overall, a pretty solid routine. And it takes such strength when you go to that low bar to regain your momentum and get into some sort of position where you can make it happen. Yeah, bars is all about timing, strength, momentum, rhythm, you name it, bars <laughs> has it because it is not an easy event at all, even though they make it look like it. Here's Bryce Wilson for the Tigers, a freshman. Huge Yurchenko layout full. Check out that distance she had on that fault. That's something the judges are gonna be looking for. She had that hop at the end, but overall a very nice vault. And by my recollection, this is only the third meet that she's participated in. She had two vault scores prior to this one, 9.863 on the average, 9.875 the best. So she's still learning. She is, she's brand new. She was out a couple meets and I'm excited to watch her. I remember watching her as a club gymnast and she was just, she would turn heads because of how phenomenal her talent was. So I'm excited to see what she does with her career at LSU. Miranda Smith recorded 9.7 for West Virginia on bars. All Ben on bars now. Brooke went 9.8 last week. She's hoping to do that again, plus some tonight. Setting up for that dismount. Double layout, very nice shape in the air. Small hop on the landing, but another hit for the Mountaineers. And long lines on that bar for her as well. Yes, long lines. You can see her toe point up at the top of that handstand. There's that Ginga release move. Well, the crowd comes alive now with Haley Bryant on the runway. Wow. Arguably one of the best vaults in the NCAA. She's so close to perfection each week on that vault. She went 9975 last week. I'm interested to see what the judges have to say about that one tonight because that she, was beautiful. She has averaged 9.95 with a 10, of course, and mixed in there, but the height on that vault was incredible. It's just amazing to watch. She has such power. She has such pop off the table. It's textbook, exactly. And there it is, maybe a perfect 10. We have not seen the score rotation. One judge has ruled a 10, so has the other. Perfection again. And this crowd is standing and roaring for one of the best in the land. That was a well-deserved 10.0. It's just a beautiful vault. There's no arguing that. The grace, the power, the beauty, the confidence of Haley Bryant, most impressive. Holmes Hackard now on bar. Emily had a little trouble last week on this event, scoring a 9.275, so I know she wants to get back up there, show what she can do, hit this bar routine for her team. Nice, very nice. Sticks the dismount. Cherry on top of that bar lineup. They did have a little trouble last week on this event, so coming away with a hit lineup is going to be huge for their confidence. Here's that Jaeger. Here's that double tuck dismount. 
she's excited about it. It always feels good when you hit that bar routine. We will see Tori Tatum in an exhibition vault for LSU. Sierchenko full and a half. I couldn't quite see the landing, but it looked like she may have stuck that vault, which would be huge. That vault starts from a 10.0, and exercising that depth is what that exhibition is all about, seeing what they have in the arsenal in case they need it. Abby Pearson will be an exhibition participant for West Virginia on bars. Exhibitioning is so important, especially at this time of the year. When you're going into postseason, anything can happen. It's a long season. Injuries happen. Um, so just getting these athletes prepared just in case someone in your lineup needs to be switched out is vital. Toe hand to a toe shoot to the high bar. Overall, well done. A few form issues here and there. She could have tightened up a little bit, but a hit routine that should boost her confidence going into the remainder of the season. Well, we saw perfection with Haley Bryant. We'll show you Haley Bryant's score of 10 on vault as we roll to our first break tonight. Haley Bryant with another perfect score. We'll come back and review all of the scores for you when we return on the SEC ESPN Network. Welcome back to the Maravich Center. It's loaded with gymnastics fans tonight here in Baton Rouge. And after one rotation, LSU 49.30, West Virginia 49.025. With Kaylee Dixon Abood, I'm Len Rollins. Katie, let's take a look at uh, some individual scores. First, first for LSU, the uh, 9.75 by Chase Brock was eliminated. Uh, giving the Tigers their total score. And of course, Haley Bryant at the bottom anchored things with a perfect effort. Haley was absolutely phenomenal on this event. They had a few landing deductions here and there in this lineup, but overall, not a bad start for the Tigers. They're capable of a little bit higher, but not a bad start at all. And now let's go to the bar scores for West Virginia. You see the uh, scores, the high was 9.85 and the low 9.7, so West Virginia turning that score in four bars. They went 48-9 last week at their last meet. So they've improved a little bit going 49-025. And now they're headed to vault. They're looking to stick some landings. Well, let's take a timeout. We'll be right back with the second rotation from Baton Rouge. West Virginia and LSU coming your way. LSU was 49.3 on vault. West Virginia 49.025 on bars. So the first rotation is in the books. And Kayla, let's look at the way college gymnastics is scored. There's a lot of time and effort that goes into crafting these routines, and they're made up of skills rated from letters from A to E. A is easier, E's are difficult. Putting these things together create different combinations because the girls' routines actually start from a 9.5, and you build in bonus connections, composition requirements, in order for them to get to that 10.0 start value. So if they break a connection or don't earn their difficulty for that 10.0 start value, you'll see the judges flash a different start value to each other. And that's why sometimes their scores could be lower than you might think. They could miss a leap connection or a jump connection or an acro series on balance beam, for instance, and that can bring their total score down. And I think overall, over the past six, eight, 10 years, Scoring has become fairer. I think it's become more consistent, and I, and I think it's uh, certainly gone in the right direction. Let's look at the West Virginia vault lineup. Jancy, Irwin, Lewis, Albin, Pearson, and Wari. This West Virginia team actually has won its last two meets, and by the two highest scores of the season at 197.325, 
So right now, the last couple of weeks, West Virginia is at its zenith so far this season. It seems like they're peaking at just the right time. This vaulting team went 49-425 on this event, and that's just a phenomenal score. So I know they're hoping to do that plus some tonight. Kiana Yancey up first for the Mountaineers. It's going to set the tone for this vaulting team tonight. That was a beautiful Yurchenko layout full. She had a great landing, and you could not ask for a better leadoff. Here's what LSU is going to line up for bars. This is the specialty item for Jay Clark, the head coach. Jeffrey Arenas, Tatum Finnegan, Cowan, and Bryant. And Alexis Jeffrey went 9-9 on this event. I've loved watching her break into this bar lineup. Her lines are beautiful. Her hand stands right on top of the bar. Her season's average is 9.852, and her best is 9.925. She's capable of a big score. <sighs> Sat down a little low in that dismount, but overall a very nice leadoff routine for the Tigers. Jay's got to be happy with that. There's that pack, beautifully done, beautiful shape in the air, and that half and half out dismount. Tiny hop on that landing, but again, a great routine. Here's Brooke Irwin. She's a Coloradoan, averaging 9.76 this year. Career high last week of a 9.85 on this event. Your Chanko layout half, blind landing, had a little trouble controlling it. That vault starts from a 995. There will obviously be some landing deductions there, but she just had a lot of power. Elena Arenas waiting for her turn on the uneven bars as the judges deliberate. Next to the uneven bars for LSU, Elena Arenas. Jeffrey on bar started with 9.775. Yancey on vault was 9.85 for West Virginia. Beautiful handstand right on top of the bar. She unfortunately missed that to Kaja. That's going to cost her five tenths. This knowledgeable crowd sends out encouragement as she remounts the apparatus. Toe handstand into a pack salto down to the low bar. She's trying to get her rhythm going again. It's so hard to get back up there and finish strong after a fall. So some problems in that routine, and LSU will most likely discard that score. She wanted to do better than that, and she's capable of doing better. But sometimes it just doesn't, it's not always there. Can't always be perfect. She did have a few hiccups here and there, but the rest of her team's got to step up, and this team knows something about stepping up and, and hitting for each other. Her that. body position in that ball was absolutely beautiful. I mean, that was like a textbook layout, <laughs> layout full from her. Oh my goodness. That's gonna be a big score for the Mountaineers for sure. So Kiana Lewis with a very impressive effort. Look at her shape. She does a complete full. Everything is glued together. No form deductions there. That vault starts from a 9.95, and I'm interested to see what the judges get. West Virginia needed a big score after Brooke Irwin's run out on the landing, and uh, that scored 9.525. Here's Tori Tatum. Her best 
on this apparatus has been 9.9 and Lewis has been scored 9.85 that might be a tad low yeah you never know what the judges see and what they're taking on because this sport is so subjective with the way that our scoring is so you really do you never know Tori Tatum is starting this bar lineup over. It's a new set. She's got a hit for her team. She's thinking, I'm the leadoff. Now I've got to set the tone because the rest of the lineup has pressure on them to hit. Tatum is a sophomore from Minnesota. Lots of air there. She did. That was a fingertip grab on that release move. She did a great job reaching for it. She's got to finish strong here. Full out dismount, stuck landing. That's exactly what the Tigers needed to finish off this bar lineup strong. Jay Clark catching the bar for her with, with those moves in the background. He has done that forever. And every time it's, it's never not funny to me. I think it's amazing. He puts a little English into it, doesn't he? He does. He does. Sometimes some French and Spanish as well. <laughs> Arenas, by the way, after the fall was 8.975. That came up a little short, but still solid. Brooke, Alvin, another great vault from the Mountaineers. I've really been impressed with their form in the air on these vaults and their landing so far. They've done an amazing job. Here's Aaliyah Finnegan. Her big scores have been remarkable. Bars is the only apparatus on which she does not have a 10 this year. And she is beautiful on this event. Let me tell you, I am shocked she hasn't gotten one so far, but she's knocking at the door. I know she's going to get it. Nobody has ever in the history of LSU gymnastics scored a perfect 10 on all four events in one season. She is very close, and you'll see from this bar routine, from her fingers to her toes, she is just beautiful to watch. Her career best is 9.925. That was a beautiful handstand. She held it right on top. That's what all handstands are supposed to look like. It's back up to the high bar. Could we be seeing history tonight? Let's see. Let's see if she can stick this dismount. Double Arabian, very difficult to stick. She does take a step, but that was beautiful. No 10, probably, but very close to it. Very close. That dismount, I cannot even explain how difficult that is to land, but I have seen her do it and stick it perfectly. That beautiful handstand again, and here's that double Arabian dismount. Small step back, but overall beautiful. Another great Yurchenko layout full. I mean, this vault lineup is on fire. They want to score big tonight. This is Abby Pearson. Just a small hop on the landing, but great height, great distance. Aliyah Finnegan came close, 9-9-2-5 on bars. Ashley Cowan is a freshman for the Tigers, just making her way into the lineup, starting her collegiate career, and she's done a great job so far in this bar lineup. She went 9-8-5 last week in this event, and she's starting to make her mark. She's got that nervous smile, doesn't she? She's, <laughs> she said, let's time, let's do it. Let's do it. It's always hard to stand there and wait on the judges, especially when you're amped up and ready to go. By the way, Finnegan, 9.925, which ties a season's high. Yeah. 
beautiful handstand right on top of the bar. Ray to immediate bail, very well done. Tell me about the stress on the wrists, the palms, the knuckles. Oh, it wears and tears, especially on your wrist. So hey, that's close. good stuff from the youngster. So close to that stick on that dismount, but a beautiful routine. You couldn't ask for much better. Here's that Ray right into a bail, and a lot of times you'll see when the release is connected to the bail, that bail does not have to go to handstand. If the bail's by itself, then it does. We'll check her score in a minute. This is Emma Wary. She's a first-year participant out of Pennsylvania. 9.875 last week. Looked like she stepped out of bounds and just had a little problem on that landing, but that was a big vault. She landed way far in the back of that mat, had great distance. Front handspring, pike half. Clearly on the stripe. Over-rotated just a little bit. Now Haley Bryant seeking her ninth all-around title this season and her 17th in her career. She went 9-9 the last time she was out on this event, and she can do that every single time she hits uneven bars. She's already scored 10 on vault tonight. What a combination of strength and poise and grace and confidence. Definitely the whole package. Cowan was 9.9 .9 on bars for the Tigers. That's really nice. It's a big score from a freshman. That was a career high, by the way, for Cowan. And change it to a huge Jaeger from Haley. Bail to handstand, very well done. Double front, half out. I don't know, Lynn, we may be seeing a 10.0. That was pretty close to perfect. That is extraordinary, and this crowd erupts again for Haley Bryant. That was beautiful. I mean, she held her handstands right on top of the bar. She stuck the dismount. Here it is again, that huge Jaeger. She may have done it. The girls are cheering, the crowd's on their feet. It is another 10 for Haley Bryant. Two events in the books and two perfect scores for Haley Bryant. What a night so far. I mean, we know she's amazing, but two tens in a row, that's just outstanding. That's the first time that she has scored a 10 on bars in her career. What a night for her. Perfection so far, halfway through for Haley Bryant. And those big scores are helping this team tremendously. Carly Nelson in an exhibition ball. Your Chanko layout full. She had a little bit of a pike down, chest down. So there will be a little bit of a landing deduction, but not a bad vault overall. And Cameron Ryan will be on bars as an ex exhibition performer for LSU. And she is one of LSU seniors, so this will be the last time she is in the PMAC. I know she's feeling every possible emotion as her gymnastics career comes to an end, so I'm excited to watch her perform on this event. Out of Luling, Louisiana, in the southern part of the state. Line change into a straddle Jaeger, into an immediate bail. Sets up for the dismount. A nice 
nice double layout with a stuck landing. What a great job. That's a big moment for her in front of a packed house, the last time that she will participate in gymnastics in this building. And you know what? There's no better feeling than sticking that dismount, hitting that routine, and hearing thousands of fans cheer for you and your teammates, of course. Well, the question tonight before the meet that a few fans were talking about in this building was who would have the biggest attendance tonight, the uh, LSU baseball game or this <laughs> gymnastics meet? I think we are seeing it right here. I think so, too. Come to gymnastics and then go over to baseball. Olivia Dunn with an exhibition performance here. Kaylee, LSU's bars score was 49.5. That's remarkable, and that ties a season's high. That's extraordinarily well done. That's exactly where they want to be. That 49.5 mark is pretty much spot on, especially going into postseason when you're working the numbers with what you need to be a championship caliber team. Dunn, of course, has experienced a lot of injuries this year. She's only been a scarce part-time performer. Gymnastics is tough on your body, and when you're coming to the end of your career, doing it in college, it, it wears and tears on you. But Olivia is beautiful on bars. I love her lines. Her big dismount stuck the landing. She should be happy with that, and she got out in the PMAC getting that experience just in case she goes into the lineup within these next couple weeks. So the second rotation has been concluded. We'll come back and review scores in just a moment. LSU and West Virginia in the Maravich Center tonight. After a couple of rotations, LSU at 98.80, West Virginia 98.10. And this, of course, comes after two rotations. Let's take a look at uh, the scores for West Virginia on vault. An interest, a uh, individual scores line up like this. Uh, Irwin's score was tossed out, and the high was a 9.850 from Lewis and Yancey. And then we go to what was a really high bar score for LSU. It tied the highest of the season. LSU on bars was pretty darn good tonight. 49-5, you can't ask for much better. Great scores all around, capped off by a perfect 10 from Haley Bryant. Just a beautiful ball rotation. They've got to be happy with that. Well, look at those last four scores, 9.9, 9.925, 9.9, .9, and 10. That's remarkable. That's exactly what you want at the end of your lineup. We've got more for you coming from the Maravich Center here as we are halfway home with West Virginia and LSU Gymnastics. Totals look like this after two events. LSU 98.80, West Virginia 98.10. It's a packed house in the Maravich Center tonight. Kaylee, let's take a look at the 2023 SEC Gymnastics Championship seeding as of March 7th and the importance of these numbers. You'll see LSU in there at number two, Florida at number one, Bama, Auburn, Kentucky, Arkansas, Missouri, Georgia. Next week is going to be huge. This is a huge meet, especially going into NCAA regionals and nationals. The SEC is the toughest conference. Anything can happen at any given moment between these teams. And unless something catastrophic happens to Florida, LSU wants to hold on to that second spot Jay Clark told us before the meet that uh, he, he's looking for a 197.8 or above tonight, which he feels would lock in LSU in that second spot. If that occurred, he would start the championship in the SEC on bars, which is what he wants to do. And based on the bar score we just saw, we can understand why. Absolutely, bars is a big score for them, especially if they do what they did tonight. Well, let's look at the gymnastics postseason schedule. It's uh, it's upon us, isn't it? <laughs> postseason is here. You'll see the SEC championships are next week. 
NCAA Regionals, which is the biggest meet of the year. That will tell us who is going to the NCAA Championships in mid-April in Fort Worth, Texas. So we look forward to that. It's right around the corner. Let's look at LSU's beam lineup tonight. Arenas, Shenakova, Jeffrey, Ballard, Bryant, and Finnegan. Haley Bryant is the story so far in case you've just joined us. She has scored a perfect 10 on both events in which she has participated, and she's got two more to go. This beam lineup has really impressed me this season. They've had to switch some people out, and everyone's done a great job handling the pressure of beam and putting up some really great scores. LSU is ranked 11th in the country in beam qualifying score. Elena starting things off for the Tigers tonight on balance beam. Here are what the judges are looking for. Those dance and acro skills connected, combined, those give us the bonus points that they need in order to get to that 10.0 start value we were talking about earlier. They want to see those connections actually connected, no bobbles, no hesitations, and of course being balanced on that beam, not wobbling and not taking a fall. Kaylee, these gymnasts make this look so graceful. At times it's easy looking, but you are witnessing one of the most difficult events in all of sports to do well. This is just an incredible display of athleticism, of confidence, of skill, and uh, it just takes a lot to be great on this event. It does, and it's, it's not even the skills at this point as much as it, as it is controlling your nerves while doing these big skills in front of this crowd and the immense pressure you feel. But Elena did a beautiful job. A few tiny little, little bobbles here and there, but not much. She corrected her mistakes, and she led off that beam team with calming confidence. Let's go to the floor lineup for West Virginia. Lewis and Yancey, Collins, Pearson, Combs, and Holmes Hacker. This is Kiana Lewis. And this event is one to watch for the Mountaineers. It is its best event for them. And here is what the judges are going to be looking for. They want to see you present. They want to see a lot of difficulty in your tumbling, having fun while doing it, working your landings, no going out of bounds, no sliding backwards, just a perfect stick. West Virginia nationally is ranked 23rd in the country on the floor exercise. And as you say, Kaylee, that is by far their best national ranking. Floor is one to watch for them, and that first pass, that was one of her connection elements. She did a Rudy, which is a D skill, into a back layout step out. Two skill connection, required element. Let's quickly go back to the beam score of Arenas. It was 9.85, a good start. Five is what the Mountaineers tallied last week on this event. And like we talked about earlier, that 49-5 mark is exactly where you want to be. That's a competitive mark, and she's doing a fantastic job so far because they're hoping to do that again tonight. Well, competitive and then some, averaging 9.9 .9 is pretty salty. Ends with a double tuck, perfectly stuck landing. Smiles all around for that one. Just that Rudy layout step out. Great landing, great form. And that double tuck dismount. That is a D level skill. She made it look easy, but that is very difficult to end with. Shenakova on beam for LSU, averaging 9.810. She's another senior here tonight, performing for the last time in front of this crowd. 
Alona has really emerged into the all-around this year and has been a consistent performer for the Tigers. And that was a beautiful triple series. Three skills directly connected, no breaks, no bobbles. Switch leap into a split jump. The judges are looking for a complete 180 degree split along with nice height above the balance beam. So far, so good. She is calm and she is collected, doing exactly what she does in practice. Backhand spring to a gainer layout full off the side of that balance beam. She's happy about it and she should be. That was beautiful. Indeed it was. And we go back to the floor exercise. Lewis with a 9.9, .9, a very good start for that, West Virginia. That is how you want to lead off that event for sure. That ties her season's high, by the way. And Shenakoba with some wonderful work on beam. Here's Yancey. Double pike to lead off this floor routine. Excellent height and a very solid landing. She made that look easy. Over the years, these routines have gotten a lot more sassy, haven't they? Yes, very sassy. They try to match the personality of the gymnast to her music and to her dance so that she feels comfortable showing it off in front of thousands of people and to get the best score possible. How much difference is there in, in the different mats, the different surfaces from, from one venue to another? So that matters, and it may not be something everyone thinks about, but something like this, this floor is in particular very bouncy from what I remember, but then you go on podium, and that's a raised surface, and that's even bouncier. So that's why there's practice days, and on floor you may have to take less steps, and vault you may have to start further back because you're propelled forward more because you're faster. So, so there may be compensation needed one way or another. Yes. So something like on basketball court, like this surface is, is a little bit tougher than podium. So it does matter that warm up time is so important to get a feel for the equipment and to make sure that you're comfortable with it. It's that huge double pike that she led off her floor routine with. That final tumbling pass, huge double tuck. Her ankles were glued together in every single tumbling pass. That'll put up a big score. Let's go back to beam. It's Alexis Jeffrey. And by the way, the preceding beam routine by Shinnikova resulted in a 9.875 for her, and that's a season's high. It's very well done, and Jeffrey hopes to build off of that right here. And I have been super impressed with her because she comes out at Alabama, first time competing on balance beam, and she's capable of scoring a 9.9. .9. And that is huge to do, especially on this event when you're just breaking into the lineups. By the way, if you're interested in the, num the LSU record in beam titles in a single season, it wasn't that long ago, Sarah Finnegan had 11 in one season on beam, which is remarkable. And that was in 2019. Sarah Finnegan's beam was one of the best. It was beautiful. It was like artwork in motion. She was, you just couldn't take your eyes off watching her balance beam routine. You could not ask for much better. That was beautiful. She was solid the entire routine hit her acro series, stuck all of her landings, and she was confident about it. Standing front tuck, extremely difficult. She made that look like it was so easy. 
And a stuck dismount to cap it all off. Ellen Collins out of Clearfield, Pennsylvania, averaging 9.88 this year on floor. She is capable of scoring a 9-9 on this event. Or higher. Let's see what she does tonight. Punch Rudy to a layout step out to that start was things off. Wasn't it? it was beautiful. A lot of times you won't see the gymnast do the front handspring before that skill, and that's okay. It could be because she does it better just running and punching, or she could have wrist issues. You never know. But it's really cool how the code of points allows you to mix and match so many different skills to tailor it to what you're best at. Required split element, that jump connection that the judges are looking for. Taking some deep breaths. These floor routines are so tiring. Double tuck, very nicely done. You'll see she's got that four inch mat over there. That is not a deduction to have on the floor. A lot of times the gymnasts need it because this event, all events in particular for gymnastics, but this one especially, it's tough on your ankles, tough on your body. You want to ease those landings as much as you can. Just that first pass again, very well done. And that final double tuck. And let's go back to the LSU beam score from Jeffrey. Alexa scored 9.9. .9. And that ties the season's high. And now Sierra Ballard, the daughter of Lori Strong Ballard, an All-America at Georgia and a Canadian Olympian. Gymnastics runs in Sierra's blood, and I love watching her perform, especially on floor. But she has broken into this beam lineup and has put up some very big scores for this Tigers team. into a switch half. Front toss. Finishing each move, very sharp. Head up, showing her personality that we see all the time on floor on balance beam. I love that. She looks very confident, doesn't she? She does. That's what balance beam is all about. If you have confidence, you're going to hit. Round off, full and a half. Takes a step back on the landing because she's a little under rotated, but that was a solid beam routine. Collins on floor for West Virginia was 9.85. As we take a look at Sierra Ballard again. There's that dismount again, that round off, full and a half. Tiny step, but again, very well done. Now Abby Pearson, 9.855, her floor average in 2023. She went 9.925 on this event last week. That was a big double layout to start this routine off. All throughout this routine, you're also required to do changing of levels, which means you're on your feet, you get on the floor for a part of the routine. The judges want to see the diversity in your dance. So they are also taking that into consideration when judging floor routines. <laughs> Great routine going so far. It's actually took 
a wrong step there, but managed to fix it. That was a two salto pass. That's also the required element for floor. Sarah Ballard, uh, Sierra Ballard was 9.825 on her beam routine. Here's Haley Bryant, who has already scored 10 on bolt and 10 on bars tonight. That beam average is close to perfect as well, which is no surprise. It's just amazing to see how perfect she is almost on every single event. Beautiful acro series. That was a front aerial into a back handspring. She's poised, she's polished. Spot on, square on the balance beam. Full turn, another required element, and arguably one of the hardest <laughs> skills on balance beam, even though it's the easiest. When those nerves set in, it could be tough. Small wobble on that front tuck. That will be a deduction, but she recovered well. And a Rudy dismount sticks the landing. A beautiful routine. That's not going to be a 10, but it's going to be pretty darn close. Switch leap into a straddle quarter. Full split on both of those elements. And that Rudy dismount. Very well done. Happy Pearson uh, scored 9.825 on floor, and we'll pass along the Bryant beam score when we get it. This is Kendra Combs for West Virginia. Kendra Combs is a senior for the Mountaineers, one of the leaders of this team. She is the most experienced gymnast for the Mountaineers, so having her pave the way and lead this team because she's been there before is vital for the confidence of this team. She's competed in 56 meets in five seasons at West Virginia. So she knows a little thing or two about coming out here and performing. Double tuck. She's fighting to get that stick. Kaylee, while we've got a moment, there is a note tonight because of Haley Bryant's two tens, and that in itself is a headline. But LSU, on the strength of those two tens by Haley Bryant, now has eight perfect scores as a team for the season. That's never happened before in LSU history in one season. So 8-10 scored this season so far by a variety of LSU gymnasts. That's more than has ever occurred before in the history of LSU gymnastics in a single season. And more gymnastics to come. It's just amazing to watch. Aaliyah Finnegan, here she is, up on balance beam next. And speaking of perfection, she can do it on this event. A very unique mount of the beam. 9.906 is her average, which is just off the chart. It's amazing. She's number six in the NCAA on this event. She's gotten a 10 here before. Triple series, very well done. She fought for that stick. Boy, your heart just comes up in your throat when you're watching <laughs> that in progress. It does. I think it's harder to watch gymnastics than it is to actually do it. I get more nervous watching.
Bryant on beam was 9.875. Combs on floor was 9.825. Aaliyah has had 13 titles this season, and five of them are on balance beam. This is definitely one of her best events. In other words, she wins at least half the time. <laughs> exactly. Just that dismount, gain her layout full, sticks the landing. That was very well done. That acro series again, back handspring, layout, layout, takes up the whole length of the beam. Slight wobble on that. And then the gainer layout full off the side. That was a good one. Here's Emily Holmes Hackard. 9.885, her floor average this year. She will start from a seated position. She's capable of throwing a 995 at least on this event. So this should put up a big score for the Mountaineers to cap off this floor lineup. Okay, Judge Kaylee, what do you think Finnegan scored on beam? Um, 9925. You're a little low. 9.975. 9 9 All right, I was a tough judge tonight. All right. <laughs> A Rudy layout to a straddle jump. Very well done. Beautiful leap series. Nice 180 position, pointed toes. It's so hard doing floor in an arena that's not your own because you really have to rally the crowd behind you, make this crowd your own in order to make your performance the best that it can be. Now it's a sky high double pike. That's really nice. That was a beautiful routine. First pass. And that final tumbling pass. Look how high that was. That was great. You know, Finnegan was near perfect on beam. Had she recorded a 10, it would have been a 10 for five consecutive weeks. <laughs> Can you believe that? Oh my goodness. What a record. Chase Brock, this is an exhibition for LSU on beam. Chase Brock has been an outstanding addition to the lineups the past few meets, scoring big scores, gaining confidence. And I'm glad they're putting her in here to continue that momentum for her, to learn how to control your nerves, especially on balance beam, because in postseason, she might be in this lineup. She's got a place potentially in postseason, especially as LSU's injuries and illnesses continue to plague them. And Chase Brock, in her limited ability or limited uh, uh, opportunities this year has, has really shown a lot of ability and has been a, a, a patch that's worked for LSU. She has capitalized on every single moment that she has been put in the lineup, putting up big scores and the reason for the success this team has had. She's done an amazing job at Alabama in a tough environment, putting up big scores over nine nines. And I'm excited to see how she does in postseason because I think she's going to be one of the girls we're going to have to keep an eye on. She's going to be great. Holmes Hackard scored 9.9 .9 on that previous floor exercise and certainly earned every bit of it. And here is Bren Freeling out of Connecticut with an exhibition on the floor. Set 
setting up for her first tumbling pass. Double tuck, you'll notice those lines, they're required to take the lines on a mat if you're going to slide it in, and they have to line up exactly with the lines that you see bordering the floor so that the judges know and make sure that they stay in bounds. Punch layout to a front full, very well done. Double pike, she fought to stay in bounds and she did it. It's a great routine. She got out there, she got the experience that her coaches and herself and her teammates wanted her to have going into the next couple of meets. Three rotations down, the final one to come and we'll catch you up on scores when we return. West Virginia, LSU Gymnastics from Baton Rouge. To Baton Rouge after three rotations, LSU sixth ranked in the country, leads West Virginia 148.275 to 147.50. Let's get you caught up on some scores from the last rotation. LSU on beam had a high of 9.975 by Finnegan. One judge actually went 10 on her routine and uh, the 9.825 was discarded for the Tigers, but a very solid beam routine for LSU. On floor for West Virginia, a 9.825 was uh, was taken off the board, and 9.9s uh, were the two highest scores from the first and final competitors in that event. So we get set for West Virginia on beam, LSU on floor exercise, more in a moment from a packed house in Baton Rouge. LSU leading after three rotations, 148.275 to 147.450. Following this meet, most of this crowd will stay for a while to uh, pay tribute to LSU's six seniors. We show them to you here. Kami, what was it like uh, in your final meet in this building as a senior? What are these girls going through right now? It's emotional. You come to LSU to finish a sport that you've been doing for 15 years or more. And it's it's an emotional thing, but also very bittersweet and exciting. You still have the rest of season to accomplish. Um, but these seniors have made their mark, especially Kaya Johnson. I know she's out with an injury, unfortunately, but she's been named a 2023 AAI Award nominee. And that's one of the most prestigious awards um, for a top senior gymnast in the NCAA. So I know she's bummed to be out. Um, we all are, we hate to see that, but she has made her mark on this program. Kai Rivers has done an amazing job contributing to this team. Alona, who's competing tonight, Cameron Ryan, Lexi Nibs, Maddie Rao. They've made their mark on this team. They've, they've inputted so much depth and a lot of leadership and they will be missed. Well, they've, they've quite honestly been part of the elite in, in college gymnastics at LSU for the last four, five, six seasons. And of course, the Tigers always ranked in that top five, six, seven slot and uh, challenging for the national championship on occasion. And we'll see what postseason holds here. It's, it's not a whole team right now, that's for sure. Now, there is some good news because K.J. Johnson may be able to return to the lineup, not in the SEC tournament, but perhaps in postseason after that and she's been injured a while. Here's the beam lineup for West Virginia. Holmes, Hackard, Pearson, Yancey Combs, Lee, and Wary. Holmes, Hackard, 9.760 on average this year on the beam. And if you've just joined us, Haley Bryant in her first two events scored perfect tens. That gives LSU as a team eight scores of 10 this year. And that's the most in a single season in the history of LSU gymnastics. Perfect 10 is not easy to do. And they are making it look easy. <laughs> Now 
definitely starting things off for the Mountaineers tonight. Front aerial, acro series, wanting to keep things connected. It is so hard to finish on beam, especially when you're at a venue that's not your own. It can be nerve wracking, so learning to control those nerves and just do your gymnastics. There is so much trust involved in, in, in beam because there's so many blind, blind landings on a four inch wide apparatus. That's right, you have to trust your training, trust yourself, and know that you can because you have done this a million times over in practice. There's the dismount, gainer off the side. Very well done, a little shaky here and there, but a solid lead off. Sierra Ballard will be first up for the Tigers on the floor exercise. She'll be followed by Shenakova, Brock, Arena, Finnegan, and Bryant. Sierra. And this is a high energy deal in the Maravich Center. She is going to kick things off. High speed, high energy, big tumbling, and this crowd's ready for it. Finnegan, later in the lineup, by the way, is fifth nationally in this event, and Bryant is 17th. But first, Ballard. Huge double layout, sticks the landing. Big tumbling, lots of personality in this floor routine. It really gets the crowd going, her teammates, and sets the tone in the best way possible. Full and a half to a punch layout. I've been waiting for Sierra to lead off this floor routine and get a 9 9 because she's capable of that score. The first person out doesn't always get the biggest scores because they tend to build as the lineup goes on. But I'm waiting. I think I think she's going to lead off with a 9-9 one of these times. Maybe tonight. We'll see. Final pass. Huge double pike. That was a beautiful floor routine. She she's got to like it. Her teammates do. She should and be so proud. does this capacity crowd. Oh, that's beautiful. First tumbling pass, a big double layout. And a beautiful double pike to finish things off. So we will wait for Sierra Ballard's score. Holmes Hackard scored 9.825 on West Virginia beam. And this is Abby Pearson, performer number two for West Virginia. 9.712, her season's average. Standing front tuck into a back handspring. A very interesting and difficult acro series. And she is bringing it tonight with a lot of difficulty in this beam routine. Spring, bow and a half off the end of the beam. Saw the mat slide a little bit on that landing, but that was a great dismount. Your prophecy of 9.9 .9 for Sierra Ballard came true and then some. 9.925, her score. I love to see it. That's been well deserved. That ties a career high for her. She truly does a great job leading off this, this floor rotation, so I know she's happy with that. Chase Brock. It's actually Alona Shenikova. They might have switched the lineup. Yeah, they did. It's a 
senior. Final floor routine in the PMAC. Front handspring, double full, extremely difficult. That's an E-level skill. Mona got a 9-9 the last time out. And with Sierra Ballard's 9-9-2-5, the scores should build. Full and a half punch layout. She knows it's good. She is one of the taller gymnasts tonight. Just one more tumbling pass to go. She's got a great routine so far. Janikova is a senior, a three-year letter winner. Standing five feet, five, in, five feet, five inches tall. Looks a little taller than that. Big smiles all around. A Rudy split jump to finish it off. It was amazing. That should be another big score for LSU. Her teammates think so. Full and a half, punch layout. Rudy to a split jump. What a moment for her. A beautiful routine to finish off your performance in the PMAC. We will check her score momentarily. We go back to Bean. This is Kiana Yancey. Triple series there. Very difficult to do. She had a slight wobble, but recovered well. Her season's average, you see there, 9.753. She can put up scores above a 9-9 on this event. And the crowd is cheering the floor score of Shenikova, 9.95. Actually, 9.975. She had one judge give her a 10. That's a career high, by the way, for Shenikova. What a way to close out your home schedule. It was very well done. Yancey had a great beam routine for the Mountaineers. Here's that acro series back handspring. Layout, layout, slight wobble but a very difficult series and a nice dismount to finish things off. You know, I would like to see the judges hold off on flashing the scores while the <laughs> other team's beam performer is there because yes. it, it does captivate, you know, the home crowd, especially when they see that huge score. And that can be very disruptive to the other, to the beam worker. Yeah, it definitely can. This is Chase Brock. This is one of the events that she has been scoring big time for the Tigers on. She went 9-9-2-5 her last time out. The score is building behind her. I'm hoping for a big score because she's capable of it. She is a junior, a two-year letter winner from Atlanta. She held on to that landing there. Landed a little short, but she recovered. Unfortunately, went out of bounds on that last pass. 
that will be an automatic one-tenth deduction. She knew it, and it's so disappointing. You're within inches of closing out the routine, and it brings the automatic deduction. Yep, she's had a little too much juice on that last pass. She had to hold on to that landing there, too. There it is, you'll see her. If the gymnast foot never crosses the line, it's not a deduction. But she crossed the line, so unfortunately that deduction is there. Kendra Combs on beam. Yancey scored 9.7 for West Virginia on beam. Kendra is a fifth year senior and she puts up some big scores on this event especially. She's one of the leaders on this beam team. I love this shot, the footwork, just to show you how steady it has to be, how little room for error that is, there is. And the corrections a lot of times. Mm -hmm. You'll see gymnast's feet on the side of the beam and they recover like it never even happened. That was a beautiful routine from Kendra, and that should put up a great score. Elena Arenas. 9.842 is her floor average. Brock scored 9.7. Elena's routine is so fun. And behind her, you've got Finnegan ranked fifth nationally and Bryant ranked 17th nationally. Front double full to start things off. Looking to get the Tigers back on track here on floor, get some more of those big scores going. And there's a fine line when you're working floor. You have to be powerful and dynamic, but you also have to be controlled and composed in order to stay in bounds. Because let me tell you, the floor shrinks. Like you think you have all this room, but mix that with adrenaline and sometimes you have too much. Front layout to a front full. Very well done. Miles all around, that should be a good one. There's that first tumbling pass, front handspring double full. Front layout punch full. And now Anna Lee on beam for West Virginia. 9.767, her season's average. Front aerial into a backhand spring for her acro series. Nine point eight seven five last time she competed. And Combs, the preceding beam worker, scored nine point eight five. Nice work. to a switch half into a beat jump. She's got a great routine going so far. You can tell how confident she is. Cartwheel to a gainer layout full. Small hop on the landing, and that was honestly the only deduction I saw in that beam routine. That was beautiful.
You know, right there in your screen, you're seeing one of the more dynamic and energetic and knowledgeable voices in all of college gymnastics. This is Mike Smith. And he has been here a long, long time and has been a vital part, a vital part of the blossoming interest in gymnastics at LSU through his knowledge, his excitement, and perfect timing at these events. In fact, he works a lot of postseason stuff in the NCAA, so congratulations to Mike Smith. His, his voice is synonymous with LSU gymnastics. It is, it's not the same when he's not here and he is a legend, so to speak. He's done so much for this program. So Leah Finnegan on floor. Huge double Arabian. Only four gymnasts in the country have better floor scores than the young lady on the mat right now. She is ranked number five in the land. She got a perfect 10 on this event at Alabama the last time she competed. And it was beautiful. And Alabama is not an easy place to compete. Two and a half punch front. Wow, perpetual motion, a fireball. Legs were glued together, great height. And her floor routine is so fun. I feel like it matches her personality. <laughs> Finishes with the tiger roar. That's going to be a big score for LSU. It's that big double Arabian that she opened with. Step back on the landing on that. And then that final tumbling pass. That's just about as good as you can do it. That was beautiful. Arenas on floor was 9.925. That's a career high. We'll pass along the score for Finnegan in just a moment. Lee scored a 9.825 on West Virginia Beam. And here is Wary. 9.75 has been her season's average thus far. Remember, this West Virginia team will hop on a plane tomorrow morning and go to Rutgers and close out its regular season on Sunday with a double header, so to speak, on the final weekend. And it's not easy to do that. There's a reason why gymnastics meets. There are so few in comparison to other sports and that they're a week apart. You genuinely need that recovery time because the day after a meet, even though you've been doing this for so long, you're sore, you're hurting. But it does, it prepares you for postseason when you have multiple days of competition in a row because you have to be your best. This Mountaineers beam team has been impressive. Tonight they've been solid, but last week they posted a season high of 49.475 on this event. It's a great routine. And we have Finnegan's floor score, 9.925. One judge only discounted that by five one hundredths. That means that more than 60,000 Tiger fans witnessed a gymnastics meet this season. Thank you for your incredible support. The best fans in the nation. Haley Bryant on her way to her ninth all around title this year. She has already scored two tens in her first two events. And this is one who is special. She can definitely score a perfect 10 on this one. It's gonna be a great routine. And she can light up the crowd in a hurry. It's such an exciting floor routine. For enhanced spring double front. Lots of length, lots of height. to a Rudy, very well done, sticks that landing.
She has never scored a 10 on this event, but she's come really close at 9.975. Set a new career high against the Crimson Tide to become only the sixth gymnast in program history to record an all around score of 39, 8 or higher. That's extraordinary. That's almost beyond conception. A 40 is perfection. So look how close she was. That could be another 10. Listen to this crowd respond to Haley Bryant. You could not ask for much better. I did not see a deduction, but let's see what the judges think. That beautiful front handspring, double front. Lots of personality, lots of height in this floor routine. And she finished things off with a front handspring double full. We go to Carly Nelson on beam from Marietta, Ohio. And you can figure it out from the reaction to this of this crowd. A third 10 tonight for Haley Bryant. A remarkable history making performance for her. And very well deserved. What a night for Haley Bryant and the Tigers. That is the first 10 on floor in Haley Bryant's gymnastics history. It may not be her last. I definitely do not think it'll be her last. Over on balance beam, among all the screaming and yelling, that was a beautiful routine. She composed herself well and got another hit beam routine for the Mountaineers. There you see it, a new high and history in the making for Haley Bryant, an all around of a 39.875. That's darn near per perfection. Three tens and a 9.875 on beam. And that makes the Tigers with nine scores of 10 this year as a club, three of them coming tonight from Haley Bryant. And that's a new LSU record for a single season. Just amazing. And this is Bryce Wilson with a floor exercise in the exhibition category. Boy, Haley Bryant has had a near perfect night. Extraordinary, just almost beyond description. It's Bryce with a front layout to a front double full. Very difficult tumbling pass. She did it well. Series. Going mm -hmm. half punch layout. She sticks the landing. She's got to be happy about it. What a routine for Bryce Wilson as a freshman in the PMAC. There's no better feeling than this one right here. So the celebration continues. Jake Clark told us before the meet, he felt like a 197.8 out of LSU would be good enough to mathematically clinch the number two seed in the SEC behind Florida. Well, the Tigers did better than that. They exceeded 198 for the second time this year, 198.025 to 196.425 for West Virginia. 
This salts away the number two seed in the SEC tournament for the LSU Tigers. This just shows you what kind of team this LSU Tigers team is. Going into floor, we knew they had to be close to perfect to hit that 198 mark, and they did it. They have fought tooth and nail for every 10th, and I'm happy to see them come out with that 198.025 score. And what a night for Haley Bryant. We hope you were here the entire way to see three tens. A 10 in the first event, a 10 in the second event, and a 10 in the fourth event. Near perfection for Haley Bryant as she wins the all around for the ninth time this year. Well, that's the story as LSU closes out on a very high note tonight and will get set for postseason play starting with the SEC tournament. For former two-time All-America Kaylee Dixon Abood, I'm Lynn Rollins. We hope you enjoyed it. We certainly did. So did this capacity crowd in the Maravich Center. Again, LSU the winner over West Virginia in college gymnastics. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.